大家好，欢迎来到公子视频节目，我是公子沈。关于以巴冲突问题呢，我觉得可以从两个方面来思考，一个是历史，一个是现实。现实上不用说了，以色列已经建国，这已经成为既定事实。它不仅被国际社会所接受，进入联合国，它同时还有强大的经济和军事实力。所以从现实角度考量，对这样的一个甚至拥有核武器的主权国家进行侵犯。那绝对就会被看作是整个国际社会的敌人。那你想，你支持这样的做法，是不是与世界为敌啊？所以说这一点是现实考量。那现实没有办法能够消灭以色列这个国家以外，那很多人就去诉诸历史，说以色列根本就没有建国的基础，或者说他过去就是双手沾满鲜血，怎么怎么样啊？就说从法理上边，他站不住脚。那这期节目呢，我想给大家放一段影片，是现任以色列总理内塔尼亚胡，他讲了十分钟左右的时间，基本上就给提问者啊，就是我的母校的一位教授 Jordan Peterson 啊，乔丹彼得森，给他上了一个简短的历史课。那么我们来看一看，从他的角度来讲，以色列凭什么能够建国，有理由建国、uh, ？The Jewish people、uh, have lived in the land of Israel, what is now the The state of Israel、uh, have lived here and have been attached to this place for about three thousand five hundred years, three and a half millennia. Now, for the first two millennia, roughly of that time,、uh, we were living in what is described in a text commonly known as the Bible. So, the Bible describes how the Jewish people lived on this land, were attached to this land, fought off conquerors, sometimes were conquered, but stayed on their land. And that uh, continued uh, for a very long time until roughly the sixth, seventh century, actually,、uh, after the birth of Christ. Okay, for for roughly for two thousand years,、uh, we were conquered by the Romans. We were conquered by the Byzantines. They did a lot of bad things to us, but they didn't really exile us, contrary to what people think. Okay, the ones、uh, the, the the loss of our land actually occurred. When the Arab conquest took place in the seventh century, the Arabs burst out from Arabia, and they did something that no other conqueror—not the Romans, not the Byzantines, not the Greeks before them, not Alexander the Great—nobody did before. They actually started taking over the land of the Jewish farmer. They brought in military colonies that took over the land, and gradually, over the next two centuries, the Jews became a minority in our land. So it is. Under the Arab conquest, the, the Jews lost their homeland. The Arabs were the colonials. The Jews were the natives dispossessed. Well, that happens in history. The Jews were dispossessed. We were far, flung to the far corners of the earth,、uh, suffered unimaginable suffering because we had no homeland. But we didn't disappear, and we never gave up the dream of coming back to our ancestral homeland. So, generation after generation. Jews could be in Warsaw, they could be in Yemen, they could be in、uh, they could be in China, and they said next year in Jerusalem we'll come back. Next year in Jerusalem, well that、uh, was made possible because the Arabs who had conquered the land basically left it barren. They never made it their own. It was a barren land. It really had practically it was an empty land. And in the 19th century, the idea of coming back next year in Jerusalem became a reality. By the way, in part because of Christian Zionist support for the idea of the Great Return, the Jews came back in the 19th century to the land of Israel. The result of this return was that we started building farms, factories, places of employment. <laughs> Arabs from nearby countries started emigrating, and they now became—they call themselves Palestinians. They reconstructed history and said, "We've been here for centuries." No, they haven't. They weren't there at all, and they didn't have a national consciousness. We came back, made it our land, and we said, "Okay, we now will live together." We decided to establish a state in 1948. That's 75 years ago, and we we said everybody can live here. The Arabs said there can't be a Jewish state. You have no right to be here. It's our land. It's not your land. It's been our land for 3,500 years. If you took over your、uh, somebody's apartment, knocked them out, dispossessed them. And they never gave up the claim. They said it's our claim. And you left this barren dump, okay? And the the uh, the, the uh, families, the progeny of the people you you kicked out, came back, rebuilt the house. You cannot come back and tell them you don't belong here. We're going to kick you out, especially since you're latecomers who've come to live in 
you know, in part of the house, which is what the so-called Palestinians are, okay? We say to them, you can live here, we can live here, but it's our land, it's our state. And the reason this conflict continues is because the Palestinians, who are, represent the, the, the colonial powers, the Arab conquest uh, of uh, the Middle East and beyond, they are saying, you have no right for a Jewish state. Well, we do. If any people has any right to a state, if any people never gave up their dreams of returning to their ancestral home, if any people rebuilt their home from nothing, from barren, wasted land, it's the Jewish people. To tell them, you who have suffered more than anyone else, you have never lost your dream of coming back and rebuilding your national life in your ancestral homeland, you have no right to be there. But the Arabs who are trying to destroy you, they have that right. That is a complete perversion of history and also a complete perversion of justice. The Jews belong to this land. This land belongs to the Jews. The Palestinians are free to live here next to us, among us, but they're not free to demand the dissolution of the Jewish state. That is not justice. That is injustice. That's the shortest lecture I can give you about Jewish history. So you... So why do you think the claim that the Palestinians were somehow there in Israel first and have been displaced in a colonial occupation, let's say, by the Jews, why do you think that idea has gained such cachet, not least in the West? Because of ignorance? I mean, what do you mean they were here first? Well, you, you know, you're familiar with the story of Jesus, right? Jesus was a Jewish rabbi living 2,000 years ago. He was a rabbi from the Galilee, okay? He came to Jerusalem, he turned the money tables of the, uh, the, the, the tables of the money changers on the Temple Mount. Where did that happen? Did it happen in Tibet? It happened here. Jerusalem was our capital. King David made it our capital 3,000 years ago. So the Jews are here to try to, uh, uh, to say that they weren't here and that the Palestinians were here thousands of years ago is ridiculous. Anybody, you know, anybody who can, you can actually Google this and, and find out how absurd this thing is. So as far as reinventing ancient history, that is, that is unpardonable because anybody can find out and understand that the Jews were here for thousands of years, the Palestinians weren't here. As far as modern times are concerned, what the Palestinians have said is, oh, and I, <clears throat> I write this in my book, and I show it because it's so comical. What, what uh, they say is, we were here, uh, Palestine was a verdant land in the 19th century, teeming with, uh, you know, with uh, Palestinians until the Jews came in, uh, took it over and threw it out. Okay, well, that's what Arafat effectively said in his uh, uh, infamous speech in the United Nations, blaming uh, Zionism, equating Zionism with racism. Well, there's only one problem with that. He said that the Jewish invasion of this verdant Palestinian homeland uh, happened in 1881, okay? The problem with that is that uh, 12 years before, a famous visitor among hundreds of visitors named Mark Twain visited the Holy Land. And he describes a totally different picture. He describes Palestine, I'm quoting him, is a vast wasteland. He said, only imagination can grace this barren land with the pomp of uh, circumstance and life. It's just, he said, we traveled for a whole day. We didn't see, in the Galilee, we didn't see a human being, one single human being. He said, Jerusalem sits in sackcloth and ashes. And as he was saying that, it's the Jewish return that began, the Jewish return that began building the land. Well, perhaps one could argue, uh, it's obvious that Mark Twain was not in the service of uh, the Jewish state because it didn't exist. He wasn't in the service of the Jewish lobby because there wasn't any Jewish lobby. He was just reporting what was there. Could there possibly have been a tremendous influx of Palestinians between 1869 and 1881, the year that, uh, that uh, Arafat says the Jewish uh, invasion began uh, and destroyed the Palestinian paradise? Well, alas, no, because in the year 1881, another famous visitor visits Israel and he writes, visits this land, and he writes also his memoirs, okay? His name was Arthur Penryn Stanley. He was a very famous, very famous uh, courtier of uh, Queen Victoria's court, okay? And he came here on a special visit. And he says, I look south and I look north. He says, I'm in Judea. And I see nothing, he says, a barren expanse. And they both express 
both Twain and Arthur Penrin Stanley say the same thing. When, when, oh when will the Jews come back and bring this land to life? And the answer is right then. We came back, brought it back to life. Uh, there were Arabs living here, but it was, as I say, a barren wasteland. But Arabs began to immigrate naturally because we created a rise in the standard of living that attracted Arabs from neighboring states. Those Arabs are now those, the descendants of those Arabs who migrated as a result of the Jewish uh, return. Many of them now are considered Palestinians. So what I'm saying, uh, and I'm saying this to you, uh, Jordan, and to your audience, there has been a complete fabrication of history. It's the biggest lie of the big lies that have permeated the 20th 20, 20th century and the 21st century, is to say that the Arabs were here before, that is, the Palestinians were here before the Jews, when we were here for thousands of years, that we are the colonials, when in fact it was the Arabs who were the colonials who dispossessed the original natives, and that is the Jews, that we came back to this land that was laid barren by the Arab conquest, brought it back to life, and allowed Arab immigration, what we call now Palestinian immigration, to come back in. And now they say to us, in unimaginable chutzpah, you know, they say, you don't belong here. They recreate ancient history, they recreate modern history, and this is a lot of hokum. It's ridiculous. 其实他讲的内容也可以分两层面来看，一个就是在历史上这片土地就是属于以色列人的，就是犹太人的啊，曾经犹太人在这里建立过国家，后来因为阿拉伯人的殖民，当然啊，不光是阿拉伯人，最后导致犹太人离开了这个地方。被很多的势力不断的殖民统治之后啊，犹太人终于有机会在十九世纪返回他们的祖先的家园。这是从一个层面来讲啊，这个地方以前就是我的。那第二个层面就是说，他在十九世纪回来的时候，那个时候并不是那时候已经有一个什么阿拉伯的国家或者是一个呃巴勒斯坦国家，并没有。OK， 那个时候是殖民地，并没有存在一个以巴勒斯坦为民族意志的这样的一个政治共同体存在。更没有主权国家，也就不存在所谓以色列入侵这个地方，占领了阿拉伯人的地盘，因为那个时候是奥斯曼帝国的一个殖民统治的地区，有基督徒，有穆斯林，也有犹太人。特别是后来奥斯曼帝国解体之后，这个地方由英国进行代管，那属于英国的一个地盘。那在英国统治下，既有阿拉伯人，也有犹太人，对吧？大家和平共存。后来英国人准备离开的时候，说要建立两个国家，最后这个方案还是由联合国通过的。那后来为什么出现这么多次的中东战争、巴以冲突，一直持续了近百年的时间？那根本上原因就是因为当地的阿拉伯人不允许有一个犹太国家，所以他们一定要把在这个地方生存的犹太人全部清除啊！这种思想就跟曾经殖民这个地区的很多帝国一样的思想，甚至比那些曾经的帝国更加的极端。以前的殖民者至少还让你去生存，像罗马帝国。基本上不怎么管这个地区，建立了一个叫做犹太的行省。但是没想到阿拉伯人到今天都想消灭犹太人，把犹太人从这地方驱逐出去。所以现在的冲突更大的责任，先不说那个恐怖袭击的问题啊，就光是双方的这个历史恩怨，很明显阿拉伯人比犹太人更加的站不住脚，或者说他们有一个非常不切实际的目标，就是因为要达到这个不切实际的目标，他们没有任何的。合理合法的办法去达到，那只能去搞恐怖袭击。所以这个问题的根源不在以色列，而在于阿拉伯世界，特别是阿拉伯世界对一些极端势力的支持，才会造成大量平民的伤亡。当然，这也包括以色列在消灭这个恐怖分子，在反击的过程中连带伤害到的巴勒斯坦的平民。双方的平民都是无辜者，是值得同情的。最可恨的，当然在我看来，就是那些支持极端分子的人。因为他们为了自身的目的不顾他人的死活，当然，我们都知道这个世界就是这样运行的，真的没有办法。有些人注定就会当炮灰、当韭菜。所以我就说过，多读点历史，你就会对现实当中的很多现象和事件，会抱有一种平常心来看待了，因为觉得很多事情都没办法让你再惊讶起来了，甚至没有任何的一件事情会让你感到震惊。因为当我们读了历史之后，会发现。世界就在不断的轮回当中，人类社会的本质一直都没有改变。所以在我看来，只要不斩断这些极端势力和他们幕后黑手之间的纽带，那么这个地区就永远不会得到安宁。但是很多国家都不希望发生世界级的大战，毕竟这种大战会造成更多的平民伤亡。所以这就导致了这个地方一直都是代理人之间的战争，从来没有消停过。
，你想把所有冲突都解决，几乎是不可能的。当你试图去解决这些小冲突的时候，可能会引发更大的冲突。所以过去我好几期节目都强调，你不能既要又要，你不可能创造一个完美的世界，不可能实现所谓共产主义或者世界大同，这只是一个理想。我们当然要追求这样的理想。我们要想办法让这个世界更美好、更和平，这是毫无疑问的事情，这也是一句废话。但是如果你只是举个牌子说我们要和平、我们要停火，其实是挺没有意义的事情。这只能显示出自己的美好的心愿，但是可能会显示出自己的无知，因为这个世界不是按照你想象当中的样子去运行的。你试图解决小冲突，反而可能会引发大冲突，但你又不可能看着这小冲突不断的在爆发。我们只能在。冲突与和平之间，在大的牺牲跟小的牺牲之间做出选择，并且实现某种程度的平衡。看到以色列为了报复恐怖分子而空袭加沙造成的人员伤亡，当然我们会感到很遗憾。这种情况当然也是无奈之举。我相信以色列也不想造成普通平民的伤亡，他们针对的是武装势力。但问题就在于这很难去把握。但是我们一定要清楚，到底谁是罪魁祸首？你以为以色列不建国？这个地方就安全吗？以色列如果不建国的话，现在被迫害甚至种族灭绝的很可能就是犹太人。就算把犹太人都赶出去，或者说种族灭绝了，那你觉得巴勒斯坦人在这个地方他们能够和平的了吗？穆斯林自己就分逊尼和什叶，这之间的仇恨的程度、血腥的程度，甚至远远超过以色列和巴勒斯坦。所以，以色列建国并不是导致灾难爆发的源头，原因是有些人为了自己一己之私。试图在这地区制造灾难，制造恐怖，让这个地区的人民不能安宁，以此达到自身的目的。而他们的理由，所谓消灭以色列这个犹太国家，根本就是站不住脚的借口。而在这当中，受害的不只是犹太人，也包括无辜的巴勒斯坦人民。好，这期节目跟大家聊到这儿，感谢大家收看，欢迎大家点击订阅这个频道，我们下期节目再见。